and it will give you information with these these lines that will change and move about but we'll, we'll maybe demonstrate that in a minute rpm for the engine we'll bring it up to about 1200 to get the engine nice and warm a little bit more than that that'll do um down here is this odd box adf the sort of automatic direction finder each airport certainly a lot of them are, are starting to phase this out because these days gps is king but a lot of places have um adf frequencies um if you look on on the charts we might but basically you can put in you can basically put in any any frequency for an airfield and it will make this little yellow needle come to life in whichever direction and it'll basically point in reference to the airplane obviously this is the little airplane this orange thing facing forward uh if it was on at the minute it's obviously telling us to turn to our right and then you, you'd, you'd be flying towards the airfield you needed so that's really nice this little thing here it's just like the mileometer in your car um it's a hobbs meter it's known as and it just counts the hours that the engine's running um for kind of wear and tear uh, and maintenance um logging cabin heat so hot air and actual kind of fresh air from outside so easy those ones um i think in the cessna it's a bit confusing because they the all these kind of push pulls they look similar so you know you could take the park and brake off accidentally and when you're looking for the primer or whatever so you notice that they're slightly different shapes so that one's smooth and round and these ones are kind of lumpy and bumpy so that you you get a bit of a feel for it the throttle again will feel different because it's got a different shape and the mixture is a different shape again so and a different color so you don't get too confused so brakes off we're gonna start rolling there is checklists that you can go through um, you can find them up here you hit the little tick and it gives you everything to go through if you really want to be smart about going step by step through all of this if you can't find a particular item on the check checklist there's usually the little eyeball icon you can press and it will show you in the cockpit whereabouts it is um, it's very useful really but I'm just gonna taxi along we're using our rudder we're using these our feet to steer nothing's going on with um, the yoke we want to go left we go left we want to go right we go right and it's um the foot that's pushed out away from you is the direction that you go i know sometimes people will set their rudder pedals up incorrectly <coughs> which causes them a real problem if they then go flying for real or something and they get a massive shock so make sure that your rudder pedals are round the right way if you've gone and bought some now the controls obviously this does nothing really i mean you can see a little bit of movement there's probably a little bit of wind so up and down obviously we've got the the wind kind of passing over the tail so that kind of affects the impact of lifting and dropping the tail and the pressure on the nose wheel so if you're in a soft field environment you'll want to pull it back and just kind of wheelie a little bit and it's just that kind of gentle surface pressure on the uh, front wheel But you can you can see the instruments are moving the compass is changing if I come up here the compass is changing let there we go so before we take off how much power can we put in with the brakes holding we get it up to 2000 looking at this up here no 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 right the brakes aren't holding very well
So, 1500. Switch the taxi light off or switch the landing lights on because we're about to take off. Going to do a test for you for the mags. As I said, it's on both at the moment. Notice this. Note the RPM has just dropped a little bit. Right circuit. Still dropped. Still dropped. Back to both. And it's come up a, a little bit. So it's really marginal, but it shows you that there is a little bit of a difference. Carb heat. So this is pulling sort of hot exhaust back through the intake so that you can avoid icing in your carburetor and in, in, in the engine. Um, which obviously impacts your, your power and performance. So as you're not getting the sort of the freshest of air, again, that needle dips a little bit, you can see. But it's good for particularly if you you want you want to pull this out if you're descending, if you're doing a big long descent to land or something like that, and you're not demanding a lot in power from an engine and if the outside air temperature is below freezing or something like that, you you would use it so that you you definitely had that power should you do should you need it let's say you needed to do a go around and, and hammer the power back on um to have another go at landing you wouldn't suddenly want to not have that power especially if it's gone not to plan for you so it's a good thing to have so if you push that back let's get ourselves up in the sky So we're going full power. The airplane wants to run to the left. You have to put in a bit of right rudder because the propeller spin in one way. The airplane wants to spin in the other direction, um, and it's that that causes this, this the torque, the twisting motion. It also means that the airflow is slapping this side of the rudder, so it's pushing you to the left constantly. So to balance, you've got to add a little bit of right rudder and that'll keep you straight straight and balanced like this balance ball here you can see it's off to the right if I just put in a bit more you get it in the middle been maybe a little bit generous with the trim it's wanting to lean to the right as well. It could be that it's the amount of rudder that I'm putting, putting in. If I take my feet off the pedals completely, that stops. We've got a nice temperature gauge up here. If we were not unsure about what the t outside air temperature is, there you go, you've got that. You want to know how much fuel you've got? You've got that there as well. So yeah, our parking brake's definitely off. Switch our landing light off, and everything else is kind of where it should be. So we're up. If we can clean up the wing, that changes our sight picture outside, and we can fly in a nice straight line. We can get optimum speed. Now we're hammering along at full power at the moment. We're red light in the engine. In flight simulator it's not too much of a problem, but it's not how you'd fly. You'd bring it back down to about 2,300-ish as a sort of a nice cruise. Trim the aircraft so that it's level. You know that this and this will tell you, yeah, as obviously as the speed's kind of dropping a little bit, as we're balancing, we're losing a little bit of height. It should, even if you do nothing, it will kind of yo-yo to some sort of balance. 